Hello people from the future, welcome to Normalize Nerd. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the grid search and how you can implement it using scikit-learn. If you are new here, then please subscribe to this channel because I make videos about machine learning and data science regularly. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, first of all, we need to import the two most important libraries for machine learning, that is NumPy and Pandas. And then we will be using the pandas read CSV function to read the data set and store it into a pandas data frame. Now the data that I'm using here is publicly available on Kaggle and I will share the link in the video description. So make sure to check that. Then I'm just printing the first few rows from our data frame. Now from the column names, you can probably guess that this data set is actually about the strength of concrete. The last column, strength, is our target variable. So given a set of features related to some concrete mixture, we need to predict its strength. And we can see that we have some features like the amount of cement used, blast furnace lag, fly ash used, water used, etc. Obviously, you can use all sorts of feature engineering and feature extraction methods on this dataset to find the best set of features. But in this video, I'm not gonna do that. The main focus of this video is to implement grid search. So I'm just skipping the feature extraction part. So now I'm just separating the feature matrix and the target vector into two variables, X and Y. And don't forget to reshape the Y vector into a 2D list because the scikit-learn models take only 2D lists. And now I'm just gonna print the shapes of X and Y just to be sure that we haven't messed up. Before jumping into the grid search, we need to first split our data set into train set and test set. Please remember that grid search is performed only on the training set. During the training, it does not and should not see the test set because you don't want to tune your hyperparameters based on the test set. For the splitting, we are using the train test split method and the test size is 20%. Now only one last step is left before jumping into the grid search and that is to define a base model. Here I'm going to use the XGBoost regressor. Why? Because most of the times you will find yourself tuning the hyperparameters of XGBoost model. So here I'm defining a XGBoost regressor because our problem is a regression problem, right? And in the parameter, I am only passing a random state so that you can reproduce the results. And please notice I am passing no hyperparameters because we are gonna tune them. Okay, now that we have got a base model, we are ready to implement the grid search. The first step of grid search is to make a search space. So what is a search space? Well, it's nothing but the set of values of the hyperparameters that you want to search in order to find the best set of values for your hyperparameters. So to do this, we need to make a dictionary. And here I'm naming it as search space and the keys of the dictionary will be the names of the hyperparameters. So for example, n estimators denote the number of trees you want to have in the XGBoost model. And here I am passing three values, 100, 200 and 500. That means in the grid search process, we are going to pick each value for the number of trees and train a model. And then we are going to find which value works the best. The next hyperparameter is max depth, which simply denotes the depth of the tree. Then we have gamma and the learning rate. So our dictionary is ready. So from this dictionary, can you find out how many models we are going to train during our grid search process? Yes, 72, because we have got three choices for the first one, three choices for the second, two choices for the third, and four choices for the last. So if you multiply all this, you will get 72. So now we need to import the grid search CV class from the model selection module of sklearn. Then I'm just creating an object of this grid search. Now we need to pass all the information regarding our grid search as parameters. 
So the first parameter is obviously the model. Then we need to pass the search space dictionary. Then we need to pass some scoring methods. Here I'm using the R2 and RMAC scoring matrix. Now notice that here the RMAC is actually negative root mean squared error. And to know all the available scoring matrix, you can just print the sklearn.matrix.scorers.keys. Now the scoring matrix is actually very important because we need some number to compare all the 72 models, right? And scikit-learn will just use the scoring matrix to score each model. Now comes refit. Now here I'm passing R squared. That means the GS object will return a model that is best with respect to the R squared matrix. Then we have got the cross validation and here I'm using five fold cross validation. Now, if you don't know about the k-fold cross validation, then I will highly suggest you to watch the video that I did on k-fold cross validation. After that verbose to tell how much information we want to print. Okay. So the grid search object is ready and now we need to train this on our training set. Now, if you read them, you will understand how different set of hyperparameters affect the scoring matrix. Okay, so the execution is done. And now I'm going to print the best model. And the way to do this is to use the best estimator method. So here's the model with the best set of hyperparameters. And if you want to get only the best set of hyperparameters, then you can use the best params method. So here's the optimal set of hyperparameters. And you can see the best score of the model by using the best score method. And the metric will be what you have used in the refit method. So our best model has achieved an R squared value of 0.92, which is pretty good. Now, if you really want to analyze your model in detail, then I will highly suggest you to make a CSV file of your grid search result. So I'm just creating a file from the CV results and I'm sorting them based on the R squared score. Now let me show you how the CSV file looks like. So in this file, you will find all sorts of information corresponding to the grid search that we have just performed. Now I want to show you something interesting that will actually help you in making a better and efficient model. For example, if you look at the parameter n estimators, that is the number of trees used in the XGBoost model. So the top model uses 500 trees and the second best model uses 200 trees. So there's a difference of 300 trees and that's a lot of computation power there. Now, if you see the mean R squared value that we got from the five fold cross validation, the best model achieves an R squared value of 0.9228. And the second best model achieves 0.92218. Now, does it really make sense to use extra 300 trees for such a small improvement in R squared value? I don't think so. So that's how you can use this CSV file to come up with a more efficient model. So that was all for this video, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed learning about grid search. And if you found this video interesting, then please share this video and please don't forget to subscribe my channel. Stay safe and thanks for watching.